Hey there everyone, uh, Noel Knight here, and I'm here to basically give you another, I suppose, emulator tutorial, kind of. If you use uh, Project 64 and you're sick of certain games not loading up very well and just, you know, not doing the way, doing things the way that they should be doing it on, on Project 64, I guess you could say, um, BizHawk is very good for this, by the way, it's very, very good. The version I have installed is 2.3. The You can get later versions of it, but the version I will put in the description of this video will be to the 2.3 version. If you want to use the other versions that are a bit higher up, then by, you know, by all means, you can look around on the internet and look for it. So, I will quickly load it up and show you what this is capable of. This is an emulator that uses multiple, like, different things. You can use it for N64, you can use it for PlayStation Portable games. Um, SNES games can be used, I think NES, and I think there's some Atari games, and possibly a Sega support in there as well. I'm not entirely sure on the entire list, but I do know that N64, PSP, and uh, SNES stuff is essentially covered in the list of, of sorts. So the best part about this is that it has a lot of stuff going for it. This emulator is more used with the task community, more than anything else, because you can set up task stuff really easily. Um, I'll quickly show you, actually. If you go to profiles here, you have uh, different profiles. Casual gaming, tool assisted, speedruns, N64 tool assisted, and long plays. Um, like I said, this emulator is more synonymous with the task community, but you can use it for casual gaming as well, which is kind of nice. So, what I'll do is I'm going to quickly load up a game, real quick. The game that I wanted to play at the time was actually actually uh, Mystical Ninja uh, for the N64. Not to be confused with the su the sequel that they did. It's Mystical Ninja starring Gyoman. And every time I would um, load it up on Project 64, it was just a horrible, jerky mess. It would not run very well, it was slow. It just It was just not fun. So I was looking into an alternative, and I came across BizHawk. And when I found out that BizHawk could do N64 stuff, I was curious to see if it could run it. And lo and behold, it runs absolutely A-OK. -okay. It'll take a while to load, though. There is a little bit of loading issues. But it's not too bad. Like, I, you can put up with it. So usually when I come outside here, the game would just stutter and be completely unplayable. The music would sound like it's being put through a cheese grater. It was just not fun. But uh, BizHawk runs it absolutely a okay Now, when you install it, your settings are going to be a little bit defaulted, I guess you could say. If you want to know what I have set up for this, it depends on your hardware and stuff, of course, but the plugins that I'm using for this is the interpreter, the just just Glide N64, and obviously I have the video resolution to this. I can full screen at any time that I want, which is pretty nice. There's also a Rice plugin, which is supplied with 2.3. If you're going for a version that's further up, I think some versions don't have Rice included, so you may have to uh, go online and f and f uh, find where to get the rice plugin f uh, from. Uh, there's plenty of videos explaining where you can get the rice plugin, but 2.3 has it already installed, which is quite handy. Um, another thing I'm going to quickly mention is your controller settings as well. Whoops, wrong option. When you go to... Is it here? No, it's not in the play. It is in the control section. Excuse me. Oh, there we are, config. When you go to the control section, um, the, and you have like an Xbox One controller plugged in. These will probably all be highlighted, as well as your analog stick. Um, what you'll want to do is just get rid of all of these here. The A up, A down, A left, A right. Make them all blank. Do not have any of them enabled. And then just go to analog controller, and then just basically bind the, con the analog stick to the way that you want it. And then, boom, you've got an actual controller that works. Because otherwise, you're going to end up with the double tap problem, which is you'll be running, but then the game will think you're like double 
double tapping on the control stick, and you'll come to a sudden halt, kind of like, kind of like this in a way, somewhat. But because I got rid of it, I can jump around and move in the right direction that I want to move in, essentially, which is a good thing. Another game that I did have trouble with uh, playing was 1080 snowboarding. Um, Project 64 just did not like playing 1080 whatsoever for some weird reason. Uh, there's small graphical problems when I load up on the menu, but it's only ever so slight. It's not a big deal. Like, you get the little lines through the logos, it's not a complete deal breaker. So, yeah, Project 64 would not run this at all, really. It would play it for a bit, and I'd get halfway through a level. Especially when I was doing the time attack stuff. And what would happen is... The game would just freeze and kick me out of the emulator. <laughs> it was not very good. But uh, naturally this runs it better. I will quickly showcase it. Just to make sure that everyone knows that... Uh, that there's no problems with this. There is one little issue. With 1080 though, when I did play contest mode, when you get to the trick stage, um, you might want to mute the sound because the crowd's cheering noise is horribly distorted for whatever reason. I don't know if it's got anything to do with my sound setup or what, but I rarely have any sound issues with most games, just with 1080 that I have the issue with. But this emulator is really good. It's a good alternative, and, you know, if you use Project 64 a lot, you want an alternative to, you know, play games you can't play otherwise on it, then look no further. This Hawk will have you covered. The only game that I couldn't get to run on this Hawk at all was uh, Rogue Squadron, uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron to be precise. The game would load up fine with the menus, but then when I go to select the first mission and go to select my aircraft, the game just freezes for whatever reason. Another, another game that I had issues with was uh, Pokemon Snap as well. I'd have the blue screen uh, problem where the game's completely in blue screen. And I couldn't do anything essentially. But I think it's. Um, I think it was one of the uh, plugins on an older version of Project 64 that I could play Pokemon Snap on, which was fine. But yeah, as you can see, um, this runs 1080 fine and Mystical Ninja absolutely A-OK. -okay. So for those of you out there that want to play those games, you can, you can just play it through here, which is quite nice. I'm going to quickly uh, pause the emulation. So yeah. Um, Overall, it's a good little emulator, and it has a, a lot of, you know, a lot going for it. Uh, one more thing, I will quickly show you my sound configuration as well, just in case any of you out there want to have the right sound settings. You might have to mess around with some of them, uh, depending on, um, depending on what game you're playing and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a pretty good emulator, and uh, that's pretty much going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I will uh, I'll catch you in the next uh, tutorial video. Until then, ciao for now.